Hello, I thought I'd just show you how to make a fun little bag. I've called it that drawstring bag because, funnily enough, it's got a drawstring. Um, it's just made from two fat quarters and some batting or wadding. Um, and you can see I've used a, a nice delicious red fat quarter for the inside and this delicious owl fabric for the outside. So, and then it's got a little bit of batting in it. It's not even quilted, it's made, it's got little casings and it's got some little strings to pull it up tight. You could make it perhaps with um, like a plastic lining to use as a toiletries bag or something, or just cotton or pretty much anything you like really. Anyway, so I just thought I'd show you that. I have done a pattern for it. It's on my website on gourmetquilter.com. You can purchase and download this pattern and it just shows you three versions of the bag there. It's got all the instructions in the pattern. So initially it's got all the requirements. So you need a fat quarter of your outside fabric, a fat quarter for the lining, and you need some batting. So I've actually already cut, so the one I'm going to show you now is this delicious fat quarter is for my outside. This was given to me by a friend recently. We were traveling and she saw this and bought it for me. Thank you, Yvonne. And I really just have got to make it up into something. So this bag came to mind. And for the inside, I'm going to use this delicious yellow. Now I've already cut that and my batting to the right size, but I'll cut this out of fabric um, as, as we go. So, as I said, you need a fat quarter of the two. Now there's a little bit of fat quarter left from, from the lining. There's a nice strip that's quite usable for your next project. Um, but we'll use most of the fat quarter for the outside fabric. So it tells me in the pattern here how to do the cutting for the main fabric. So I've got to cut a piece that's 14 inches by 20 inches. And so I'm going to just trim this up here. And it needs to be 14 inches high. So I'm going to line this up with the, with the zero line on my board. And I'm going to come along 14 inches and cut through there. It also says that I need to, oh, I may need to make that 20 inches long. Sorry, I better do that. So lining up with one of the lines on my board. And I'm just going to trim that edge off so I get a nice straight edge there. And that happens to be 20 inches along. So I'll come back to my zero line, which would be much better if I was further on the table and cut through there. So there's not very much that you're not using at this fat quarter. So that's my piece that's now 14 inches by 20 for the main part of the bag. But while we're there, we might as well cut these other bits. So the other bits that we need to cut are for this casing, which you may not see so easily because it blends in here. So there's a casing either side on the bag and then there's some little ends to go on the end of your cord. So we'll cut those while we're doing the cutting. So we need to cut a two inch strip. You need two two inch by 10 inch strips for the casings. So that's a two inch strip there. And we'll just cut two 10 inch lengths from that. Trim off so it's nice and straight and come along 10 and come along another 10. So that's my two casings and then I need two pieces that are one and a half inches by two and a half inches and that's just for these little bits on the end of the cord. So not essential but kind of fun to have. So this piece of fabric here is just about big enough. So I need two of these, so I'll need a, a five inch length all together for my two pieces. And I need that to be one and a half inches wide. So there's just enough of this. As I said, these are not essential. They're just a bit of fun. You might have something else to put on the cord ends. Oops, that's got to be cut in half because we need two of those. for the ends and then you don't need this little strip here either so pretty much the whole fat quarter gone in one go not a bad idea 
So we can set those little bits aside for the moment and we'll get the main part of the bag underway. So I've cut here my batting and my lining are cut the same size. So I'm going to lay that down with the batting underneath and I'm going to lay my main bag piece on top, right sides together with the lining. And that is actually a little bit bigger than my um, lining and batting piece. It's about half an inch bigger and that's because we're creating this little rolled top edge here. So now I need to sew along that top edge there which is everything is all level. So I'll take it to the machine and sew a quarter of an inch along here. So I've got my quarter inch foot on and I'm just sewing all the way along. To the other end. Now we're going to press that We want to press that seam up the way that, like in towards your main fabric. And that's because eventually we're going to roll that over that seam allowance with the batting in it. But before we do the rest of that, So we've now got this nice looking piece here, half of it's got batting and half of it hasn't. And now we're going to bring that, that those edges over and we're going to join up this, this long seam but we're going to leave a gap in this part here for turning. So we can start at whichever end you like, as long as you've matched this top edge here you may want to pop a pin in there, that will help to keep that lined up. So I've done my seam, I've left myself a gap, about at least a three inch gap, not too near to the bottom edge, sort of halfway down like I have there, is a good place for the gap. And now we're going to quarter point the ends, so I need to, from, from where my seam is to the opposite side, I need to pop a pin in there, that's halfway round, then I can bring this point, oops, against that seam and mark where the fold sits so that you end up with marks quarter of the way all the way around this little shape. Little markers, especially if we put one in where the seam is as well to help with that. And so what we're going to do now is we can pop a little pin through those two, the, the middle where the seam is and the opposite side. And these sides, we're going to open that out and bring that point in till it meets in the middle there and then fold those back again. And I can pop a pin in there just to hold it. So again on the other side, we're going to bring that quarter point in, haven't gone through. We're going to bring that quarter point in to that middle point that we've pinned together and then fold it around so that you've kind of got these two pleats on each side and everything should pretty much sit together like that. And then we're going to go to the machine and we're going to stitch right the way across there. we go. There's these middle pins here. And stitch, just keep on stitching all the way across. So it's quite thick with this little bit of batting in it, but it seems to work fine. So there we've got these little tucks in the side here, but it's all caught in in the middle. 
And now we're going to do exactly the same thing at the other end. So we mark our quarter points and we'll do that same folding in with the ends there. We don't need to watch this bit, I don't think. So, just... so I've got my end folded in, my little bits folded in just the same as we did on the other end. And now I'm going to stitch that across the end. And we've got this very odd shaped piece of work appearing here. like a sausage isn't it so what we're going to do now this little gap that we left we're going to turn everything through that little hole so bring that pleat through and this little bit too and to encourage that through a little bit and we can see that what we're getting here is a nice little foldy bit and at this end is a nice little foldy bit and a little hole here so right now I would suggest that you close that hole you can either do that by doing a little hand slip stitch or you can pop it in the sewing machine which is what I'm going to do and stitch it closed so I would just would hold that and I'll just do a little straight stitch because it's on the inside of the bag it's not actually going to show but of course, if you prefer, you can hand sew that a little bit. That's that all done. You won't see that when the bag's finished. So you can see that I've got a little line of sewing there, but as I said, that is on the inside. So now what we're going to do is fold this over. Because this bag was a little bit, this piece was a little bit longer, there's room for it to fold over and still be the right length for the bag. So we're going to press that over and then we're going to actually just stitch in the ditch around on this line just to hold that edge. So we can pop that inside. And uh, you probably don't even have to press it, but I will give it a quick press to do this. Just helps it sit nicely. A little bit easier when you come to sew it. And you're thinking, wow, this bag's nearly finished, but we have still got the casings to go. But it is a fairly quick bag to make. Great if you just need a little gift for someone quickly or you want to put something in a bag. Now you could use, uh, take off your tray and use your free arm or you can turn it out the right way like I have. And as I said, we're just going to stitch in the ditch through all the layers along that line there just to give us a nice top edge so that it sits there. So stitching in the ditch just means stitching right next to the seam on the downside, so in this case on the lining side. stitch when you start and stop it locks off your threads so that they don't unravel and now we can just have a little play down here what you should end up with is a nice little
fold it out four corners so that basically gives it a bit of a square base to your bag and it should do the same thing on the inside corresponding so that you get this nice little base on the bag and it'll just sit there for you but we're going to make some casings now now I've, I'm suggesting that you put the seam down the center of the casings you could have it to one side it doesn't really matter which way you do it I will probably do it um, out to the sides but I'll pop a pin in here just so that I know where the center is for matching up the sides but now we've got to do a little bit of pressing with our casing pieces so basically with these we're going to press in half an inch all the way around so I usually start at the ends and I just press in half an inch at each end and then I come along and do half an inch along this edge Oops. and half an inch along this edge they should pretty much meet in the middle but nobody's going to be measuring and then the other one as well so half an inch at the ends If you get them both ready together, it's uh, kind of easy just to put them on. Half an inch in, all the way along, on both edges. And then uh, while I'm here pressing, I might do the other little bits that we're going to use as the cord ends as well. And for those, all we need to do is just a, a little bit quarter of an inch or so at each of the short ends. Just so that that's, all those raw edges will end up being tucked in. And we can set those aside for the moment. So now we've got our two casings prepared and we're going to pin them on to our bag now the pattern will show you this on here, it, it says that you need to position that casing two inches down from the top edge. So if you get your casing here and if you get your ruler, you might want to pop something inside there that you can, so that you can pop some pins in, I'm just using the pattern, just something to pin against. So on my ruler here, I'm going to use my two inch in from the edge line and I'm going to position this on now. I, what I did initially was I, I got my pin that was at the centre front lined up with the seam at the back, so it's sitting so that the sides are on the sides, nice and even. And I'm going to position this, as I said, two inches down from that top edge to the top edge of the casing. And so you can just lay that there, centre it so that there's a little bit at each end and then pop some pins in just to hold it in place. Now because I popped that paper in behind I can pin it without pinning through into the next we don't want to pin through to the back piece that would not be helpful. Let's keep an eye on that two inches, yes that's looking good and now whilst that's just sitting there I'm going to flip that over and do the same on the back with the other casing because then we can stitch all the way round in one go and sew both casings on at the same time. Pretty good. Again, two inches in from the top edge, down from the top edge. Position that so it's pretty much in the middle there. And pop yourself a couple of pins in just to hold it in place. And that's your casings just about done. We've just got to sew them. So this is where a free arm really is helpful. I am going to take this off the machine this time. A free arm just means that I've got room to go all the way around. And if you haven't got a free arm, you may want to turn the bag inside out and sew it along. It will be just a little bit more fiddly for you. But because I have got a free arm, I'm going to pop this now over that arm. And I'm 
I'm just going to start sewing one of these casings along the top edge first all, and we're going to go all the way around, stop at the other end of it and slide it along and then sew onto the other casing or you could just keep sewing if you wanted to, a little bit of sewing in between wouldn't hurt anything. So quite close to the folded edge of the casing. out if you need to if they're in the way. Now I'll do a little back stitch here just to hold that and as I said you can just keep sewing if you want to which I think I will and when you get on to the next casing again just a little back stitch just to give it a little bit of strength there. And because I've sewn across on that other end I might as well make both ends look the same so I'll just keep sewing till I get back to that first bit of casing there and then I'm going to take that out snip my threads and put it back in again now and do the lower part of lower edge of the casing so same thing close to the lower edge As you can see this is a fun little bag, you can make it in these novelty fabrics which make it a great little gift item, could be a gift bag in itself, with lots of goodies in it, oh I'd like a bag with lots of goodies in it, and in this fun fabric you could just do anything you like really, fabrics are so much fun these days. Got our casings on. We're nearly done. Snip our threads off. So we've got our casings on. I don't need that pin in there anymore. These are all ready now to take the cord. I've got the cords ready here. So the length of cord that the pattern suggests, we're just cutting that in half so that you've got two um, even lengths. And I popped a safety pin on each end ready for me to thread these through. So in actual fact, we can take them both through the first one, so all the way along one side, both together, but then they change direction, they part company. So with the safety pin on there you can easily thread that through, just got to work it through. And there they both come. Now one of them can continue on. So we'll just pull that through, just don't pull it all the way through, just keep an eye on the other end of it that there's some still sticking out. And continue on around this way with that cord. By doing the two cords in, overall they'll end up in opposite directions, it allows you to pull at each side and pull the bag in. And there it comes. And then this other one, we just need to put the pin on the other end now. So just keep an eye on those short ends. Don't let them go through with this one. And you can just feed that through. Going the other way now. So you can see I've got two ends at one end and two ends at the other end and you can see that the loop, that's that's the other part of that loop there. So that when we pull those it'll just pull that in nicely. But now we're just going to make these little cord ends. Let's put this back on my machine here. So we pressed in a quarter of an inch at each end so now we're going to fold that right sides together so that that little bit that we pressed is on the outside and we'll just take a little bit of a quarter of an inch seam 
down the sides and we can feed the next one in while we're there. So we're just making two little pockets really for the ends which we're just going to stitch on to the ends. And come back and do the other side now. them apart and turn them out the right way. So this is just a touch fiddly but I'm sure you've got a little something, a chopstick or scissors. Not too pointy though because you might poke a hole in it. So just pop your little corners out. We're so nearly done with this bag and these are so much fun to have on the end. So just a little pocket really. And this one corners out. I just find this is a really nice tidy way of doing my ends. You can do knots, you can get beads, there's lots of things you can do and sometimes I like to do this. So my two ends of my cord there, pop them inside that little pocket that we've just made, push them into the end and then take that to the machine and just stitch across just at the, that top edge to close that off and then include the cord in the stitching. So I usually go across and then I reverse back up again so that it's got a couple of rows of stitching across it because you end up pulling on the cords um, so you don't want that stitching to come undone. Lock stitch and then all the way across there and then I usually just hold my reverse down and come back again. Take our safety pins off. And tuck the little ends in their little pocket. And back to the sewing machine with that. And we're just about done. That hasn't taken very long. string bag. How much fun is that? So we've got a delicious yellow lining in our bag, all nicely lined, no rough edges in there, and we can pull our drawstring cords up and we've just got that wonderful little drawstring bag. So there I've got two of them now. I'm just so lucky. There doesn't seem to be anything in them though I have to say. Bags should always have delicious things inside them. But I just thought I'd show you that. Again, I can just mention that the pattern is available to purchase and download on my website on gourmetquilter.com. It's called that drawstring bag. Um, but I think overall that just gives you an idea of, of how it goes together or how to make a drawstring bag. Thank you.